Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is, a, I, I believe this is Friday afternoon. Beautiful day in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. And I'm here taking out these old halogen energy hogs and installing some new strip LED lights for Jimmy's Cucina in Point Pleasant, New Jersey on Broadway Ave. And um, <clears throat> that's what this video is for. So um, I got the head cam on today without it, in, uh, without it being in time lapse. So it's a little easier to watch. I understand my last video... Might have been difficult to do that. Anyhow, so I got to take these old light fixtures down, <clears throat> put blank plates on them, and then come out of these boxes to install the uh, these strip lights. I've never put these lights in before, and they were supplied by the owner, so I figured out how to do it. <clears throat> um, we'll take these out. We'll prep them. We'll see how they go up and how they attach to the brackets, and then finally, um, we'll energize the lights. They're controlled by a timer on the inside of the building. And uh, thanks for coming back to watch this video. and I'm not opposed to it at all, so maybe we'll get to that at some point. Right now, we've got a little time before we're going to do any sort of theme-driven shows, because, again, next week, I'm already booked. Piercy on Tuesday, Jason Newstead on Wednesday, Geezer Butler on Thursday, Free for All Friday, so next week is done. And then the following week, I'm on the Cruise to the Edge theme shows. And we will, speaking of theme shows, we will... If you had gone to the show, what you thought about them, they didn't call it up. And then there was this other band around that time called Roxanne, who I believe were on a label called Scott and Rose, which was part of CBS or Sony. And I liked the record a lot, and I thought that there was some potential with the band. And I had found out, and there was nothing happening with the record, and I had found out that they were already dropped by their label. So I asked my boss, the late Johnny Z, if I could go to LA, much like I did go to Arizona to find Icon, and see if these guys could be resurrected and maybe give them a second shot if they were still good. And then the final show of the whiskey, it was probably would have been late 80s. And I flew out and I went to it. And I did like that, but you know, I had to push forward with the label at the time because Megaforce was known for being the home initially of Metallica and all this heavy stuff. And I was coming in wanting to bring more of the radio friendly stuff in. Huh? Because I thought that that would have just been another logical progression for the label. The problem with that is, if you're gonna work radio and try to get bands on the radio, you've gotta have a lot of money. Because you've gotta hire independent promotion, you've really gotta you got to have a radio team, you've got to have marketing, it's a, it's a political game you have to play. It's very, very difficult to do, and it's expensive. And we weren't really set up like that. So, we had some radio success. There were some broke-ass pitches. Really. We had very little with King's X. We had none with Icon and another band I said called Profit. So, they were a bit leery, understandably, of bringing in and letting me bring in yet another band 
that was a bit of a retread because even though nobody knew that band had put out a record because it flopped, they still, in the industry, it was known that they had a record. And that's always, as unfair as it is, if you had a record deal at one point and you don't, after one or two albums, it's looked at as they're not good, they're damaged goods, there's something wrong with that band. So there was a lot working against me to try to get that done, and I couldn't get the company to agree to one assignment, and we never did. The other band I looked at right around that same time was a band called Ferrari, which was working on... Ferrari Square at 9 a.m., 12 p.m., and 6 p.m. East. We're here right now on the SXM app. Sirius XM Volume. Here is it. Sirius XM Volume. 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 Sirius XM
and your life is threatened if you don't keep your mask on. As of yes, as of a couple days ago, I took my first flight and it was a six hour flight. I've been all of them these last couple years. You had to wear that, you can't see the facial expressions. Made you feel good, you know? Energy into relationships. And just one thing, uh, your weekend idea, maybe what you do is you do a... Uh... ...off the air. If you know somebody really well, I should say. <laughs> so that kind of cuts both ways. And, and I'm uh, unfortunately left, but my gosh, Fire Down Under is a masterpiece. Oh, yeah. And, then you know, the first album the Red Forester did with it was Killer 2. Restless you know, Green, yeah. Red Forester got killed. Like, I think you are so, like, right on. And he looked at me as sincerely as he could, and he went, thank you, man, that's really cool. And I thought, shit, I'm a fan for life. That guy's cool. And one other one that talked a lot of money in I think that they would postpone, Christian. I don't think, and, and thanks, Christian, for the call. I don't think that KISS is wired and set up in a way that they could have on the drop of a dime, somebody replace a replacement member. I just don't think they could do it. I think that their staging and their production is too big. I think there's too much involved in knowing where you have to be on that stage at what time. I just don't think it's the type of thing somebody could casually walk into. Uh, just being locked in with the band and the production aspects of what they're doing, I think it's a bit challenging. Now, it's been done. Back when Peter Chris was called Stranger. Are you familiar with them at all? I am only in that, if you were listening throughout the week, I mentioned that reissue label.